so over this two to three week period of time, I, I counted once, I had somewhere in the neighborhood of 45. Either I saw 22 or was in the room or woke up then or somebody gave me a key or somebody gave me a gun or whatever. F 45 different times in two, two weeks. <laughs> I mean, it's like, am I that dull? <laughs> that you, that you, gotta, you have to do 40 some times to confirm to me that, that you're really giving me this verse. I guess so. <laughs> so then he started sending me on assignments to go and pray or decree over the nation using that version. He did all that before the assignment Chuck and I had where we went to all 50 states. And so I've prayed that verse, decreed things based on that verse, hundreds and hundreds of times all across the nation. But early in the process after he did all this, I was in D.C. on a, some sort of a prayer uh, trip. And I, was, with a, I was, was working with a team of people. And I wasn't, uh, I was doing some things on my own, but at other times I was working with this larger group uh, on big assignments we were doing together as a team, going to certain places, buildings, and praying together. And one morning I woke up early. We were supposed to go to the State Department and pray. And I was not the leader, but I was the co a co-leader of this group that was going to the State Department to pray. And you just, we just get a, a passes and just go through like tourists and 30, 40 of us and walk through praying what we felt like God had given us to pray and decree, not out loud and, you know, cause a, people to think you're weird, but just quietly walk through and pray. Of course, a lot of the intercessors were rubbing oil on the bottom of their shoes and... Just saying. <laughs> but when I woke up early that morning, the Lord said to me, don't go with them. I need you. I just want you to let them go. Don't go with them. I want you to go to the White House. This is the first year or so of President Bush, George Bush, uh, his presidency. He said, I want you to go to the White House. And I thought, well, you know, this is going to be a little awkward because I'm one of the leaders of this group. So I, I was really wondering, is this really the Lord or is this just a thought that I, I've had? Because I loved going to the White House, staying outside and praying. You know, it would have been more, more appealing to me based on my assignment than going with a group and just walking through the State Department. I loved to just spend an hour or two sitting outside and praying for the president and toward the White House or, so I was really struggling with this, and finally I called Cece and said, what do you think? She said, I think it's the Lord. I think you better, you better go to the White House. So they went their way. I went my way. This was January, extremely cold. I think probably in, the, in single digits with a wind blowing that probably made it below zero, wind chill. And I had forgotten an overcoat. Not in my room for the trip. I just had forgotten an overcoat. I had a suit coat, but I didn't have anything any, any uh, larger than that. So I knew this would be cold. I thought, I'm probably not going to be out there very long. Wouldn't be able to. But I got a taxi and went to the White House. And, and what he said to me was, there's a bad counsel coming to the president. That's not my will. And I want you to go 
and stand outside the White House because I couldn't get in. I didn't have a pass to go in on a tour group or anything like that. So I want you to go and I want you to close the door. Use Isaiah 22, 22. I want you to close the door to that council. And I want you to open the door to my council to come to him. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to do it, you know. Well, I got there and this was... This was very, very shortly after 9-11 when the towers were struck. So security was just really had just gone off the charts high and, you know, especially around government buildings. And so if you were out front for very long and you got really very close to the fence, you were sort of shadowed. You know, a Secret Service agent would just sort of, you know, they wouldn't be discreet. They would be discreet about it. But if you're walking this way and the fence is here and then over there's the, this is the White House grounds, somebody's going to be not that far away um, just sort of staying between you and the building. And so anyway, I'm, I'm there and I'm very cold, very cold. And that's distracting me. And I can tell they're watching me, and that's distracting me. And I'm obviously talking to somebody. <laughs> and because I'm so cold, I'm kind of doing this. And I realize later, it probably looks like I'm just talking into a microphone. <laughs> and because I know they're watching me, and, and the way this is all coming down, I, 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 it... it becomes clear or obvious to me early on, I look pretty suspicious. <laughs> and so that may, caused me to become even more intimidated. So rather than being focused this way, I was becoming more and more intimidated and distracted and rather than an ability for any kind of an anointing and a faith to rise up in me, I came to a point where my emotions and my soul was completely in charge. I was totally intimidated. And after about a half hour, I was in complete unbelief. And I knew I wasn't accomplishing anything. And in my mind, I didn't have all that sorted out yet. I had to think it through later. But in my mind, what I came to was, this is presumptuous. God didn't really send me to do this. And the conversation with myself was basically, who do you think you are? I mean, really, who do you think you are? You think you can stand out here and affect, stop some words and counsel coming to the highest office in the world and open the door for God's revelation to come to the highest office in the world as far as strength and authority? Who do you think you are? You're arrogant, presumptuous, full of pride. God give you a verse, scripture, you see a few numbers. And somebody gives you a rifle and you think you can go anywhere and do anything you want with it and say anything you want to say. And finally, I was totally, totally defeated. And complete unbelief. And I basically said to myself, this is so ridiculous. And I'm going back to my room, get a cab and get back to my room and where it's warm. And I should have been over at the State Department. I messed the whole thing. I messed this whole morning up. And I was walking this direction in front of the White House. And so the cab stands were this direction. So I turned to go to the taxis, 
And when I turned, there had been a woman I didn't know was following me. And she had finally worked up the nerve to talk to me. So she was speeding up, trying to catch me when I did this, and we met right here. And she said, maybe this far away, because she's pushing a baby, baby buggy. So I'm just almost tripping over the buggy. And she says, excuse me, sir. Is your name Dutch Pierce? <laughs> True story. And I said, no, ma'am. But my name's Dutch Sheets, and I run around a lot and minister a lot with a guy named Chuck Pierce. She said, oh, yeah, that's right. That, here, show me. <laughs> and she said, I've never done anything like this. I feel really weird doing this. And she, she was, it was awkward for her. You could tell she's just, she's just really, this is a stretch for her. She said, I feel really awkward. I, I need to talk to you. I said, well, Okay. She said, I woke up this morning early with this sermon that I heard a guy preach a few months ago on some verse in Isaiah. <laughs> true story. Totally true story. She said, I can't remember the verse. It was something like 222 or 222. Or, and I said, 2222. She said, yeah, about authority to open doors. Nobody can close and close doors. Nobody can open. And I, the message was I just couldn't get it out of my head. And so she finally said, Lord, are you talking to me with this, about this? And he said to her, Yes, I need for you to go to the White House. And I'll show you what to do when you get there. And she said, Lord, I'd have to walk. It's more than a mile. It's freezing temperatures. I have a newborn baby. I don't know, think this is you. You know how you have that conversation. She said, I don't, to herself, she's thinking, I don't think this is God. I can't. This can't. So she's wrestling with this. Is this the Lord? Why am I having this? She said, I've never done anything like this. But I feel like I have to. So she finally said, I called my husband at work and said, this is what's happening to me. Do you think I should go? He said, yeah, you know, you put blankets, a bundle the baby up. it would be okay. I, I feel God. This is God. So she goes to the White House wondering, what do I do? She said, then I saw you, <laughs> Dutch Pierce. <laughs> then I saw you, and she said, she said, I thought to myself, that's him. That's the guy that preached the message. And she said, so she said, I've been watching you for about 30 minutes. You're praying, aren't you? I said, yeah. She said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to go and remind him of that message. I want you to go to remind him that I have given him Isaiah 22, 22, and that he has authority to open doors. Nobody can close and close doors. Nobody can open. And so she said, she said I've been telling, she, no, she's real awkward. She said, I know you, she said this two or three times. I know you think I'm crazy. I've never done anything like this before, and I feel really crazy, but I just, she said, I have to do this. Said, I called my husband and said, this is the guy that, and I know that's him, and I feel like I'm supposed to go remind him this, but I, what, he said, well, you have to do it. This can't be a coincidence. So she says, finally, I just worked up the nerve, and just going to tell you, Isaiah 22, 22, you have authority to open doors, nobody can close and open doors, nobody can close, and close doors, nobody open it. She said, there, I said it. And then she turned around and walked away. <laughs> and 
I said, wait a minute, lady, come back here. Because <laughs> she had said two or three times, I know, you're, I know you think I'm crazy. I said, come back here. I don't think you're crazy. I said, I've been here praying that verse for 30 minutes. This is exactly what I said to her. I've been here praying that verse for 30 minutes in complete unbelief. And God sent you here to rebuke me and remind me. I gave you this authority. Now do what I told you to do. And I said this to her. Now you go on home and get your baby home where it's warm and I'll go back over here and do this right. And what, and I, I, then then I took about five minutes, did what I felt like I needed to do with authority and faith. And got the taxi and head back and got a really, really, really major spanking from the Lord. (laughs) Basically said, don't ever make me get mama and her baby out of bed again. to confirm something for you that I've already confirmed 45 times. (laughs) 